Phonics is a way of teaching children to read and write. Here's how it works. English is made up of around 44 different sounds. We call these sounds phonemes. Like all languages, English has an agreed code for how we write these sounds down. Each phoneme, each sound, can be represented by one or more letters. The letters and groups of letters that represent a sound are called graphemes. G, A, D, E, N. Garden. Sometimes the grapheme representing a phoneme is represented by just one letter, g or d. But sometimes it's more than one letter that represents a single sound. It might be two letters, r. This is called a digraph. Sometimes a phoneme is represented by three letters. This is called a trigraph. Such as the i in delightful. Or the air in fairy. Many letters or groups of letters, graphemes, represent different sounds in different words. Where a particular grapheme corresponds to a particular phoneme in a written word is called a grapheme-phoneme correspondence. Take the A sound, for example. In different words, the A sound might be represented by any of these graphemes. A, acorn. Play. Snail. Pale. They, veil, eight, break, straight. When we know which sounds the different graphemes represent, we can read the separate graphemes in a word and then put them together to read the whole word. This is called blending. For example, let's take dog. This word is made up of three graphemes. D, O, G. If we blend them together, we get dog. G, A, D. Here we have two digraphs. G, A, D. Guard. Guard? Guard dog. Guard dog. That guard dog. Oh. <laughs> when we're showing children how to read a word, we can help them by using the sounds rather than the letter names. So saying F, R, A, G rather than F, R, O, G. You can also try and use pure sounds. Try not to add an uh sound on the end. So f, r, o, g, rather than f, r, o, g. That way, when children blend the letters to read them, they say f, r, o, g, frog, rather than f, r, o, g, frogger. Uh, uh, oh, come on. This is ridiculous. Sometimes the two letters that make up a digraph, two letters that together represent a particular sound, don't sit next to each other in a word. For example, the A and E in snake are separated by the K, but they're still a digraph. The A and E together represent the long A sound, so we read s n a k rather than s n a k. E. We read n i s. Nice. Rather than n i k. E. We read h huge. Huge. Rather than h a k e. When we're using our knowledge of phonics to spell a word, we can use the same concepts but in reverse. We think of the word we want to spell and try to identify the phonemes that make up the word. This is called segmenting. But spelling a word isn't quite as simple as matching one phoneme to one grapheme. Often there are different ways of representing a particular sound. There's more than one phoneme-grapheme correspondence. Take the owl sound, for example. Owl, howl. Owl, house. Owl, bow. If we wanted to write flower, we could write flower or flower, or flower. Because the different sounds in a word can be represented in more than one way, English is sometimes portrayed as being irregular. But actually, if you delve a little below the surface, there is a system there, and learning the code that underpins English is a useful way to start learning to spell. Learning all these different grapheme phoneme correspondences can take a bit of practice, but it's something all children will be taught at school when they're first learning to read and spell. Ah! And with...
practice, they'll no longer need to sound out the individual phonemes. They'll be fluent readers. Oh. Of course, they might still need to draw on their phonic knowledge occasionally if they come across an unfamiliar word. As anyone who's tried to read a book about dinosaurs to a five-year-old will know all too well. Looking for smaller dinosaurs to prey on was a use trep, use treptospon, use streptospondylus. Sometimes, even when we've read the word out loud, we might still not know what it means. We need to match the word to the language we know already. Reading is about being able to decode the words on the page and understand their meaning. That's why, as well as practicing phonics to improve their word reading, it's so important for children to listen to and enjoy books that they can't yet read by themselves. Learning to unlock the code that underpins English is an important step in a child becoming a confident and fluent reader. And once they have this skill, they'll be well equipped to read, whether that's enjoying books as the wonderful sources of entertainment and information that they are, or reading for purely practical reasons. Ah!